So hi to this video where we'll demonstrate all the VST plugins I bought in the last years. And I want to separate these plugins by three groups, which is the low price plugins, the medium price plugins and the high priced VST plugins. And I thought that I make it like that, that the low priced VST plugins will be less than $100 the medium price ones between $100 and $200 and the high price plugins will be the ones which are more than $200. And I take just as a comparison the original price. Most of them you get with offers a lot cheaper, but just for the sake of compa comparison, I take the original price. And this one is the Silk Grand, which is a Fazioli. And um, I think you can get it for 30 to $50 or something. And it's probably 70 at the normal price. Um, what I like about it is that you can get really thunderous results. So the maximum velocity is, uh, is uh, the layers are very high. So you can get just a very big sound. Also, this instrument has a unique sound to it, which I also like. So it has a little bit of detuned sound. It's not too clinically perfect. That's what I like about it. What is a drawback is that the sample mapping is not that great. So you definitely have tones where when you play two consecutive notes at the same MIDI value, you can program it, you will see the volume output and the tom the output is dramatically different, which is very bad because assuming I want to play trill there, for example, on a real grand, I don't want to have these big fluctuations in volume and in tempo. But um, yeah, you can play quite nicely on this grand, nevertheless. Let me demonstrate now a passage, an excerpt from the third Chopin sonata, um, where I will play this beautiful melodic line. So let's see how mel melodies sound. And so on and so on. So sometimes there, there are also clicks. And yeah, the velocity mapping is really not the best. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I would recommend it to be honest. I think um, if you really like that sound and if you have very particular, particular uses for it, then I would recommend it. But otherwise, I think um, the playability is not good enough to, be, to use it really as a go-to instrument to play piano on it. So let's have a look at the next instrument. So the next instrument is a three VST plugin. It's a Mason Hamlin, a model A, I think. And I will put the download link in the description. Um, it is from someone who sampled his grand at, grand at home. And I think did a very good job at it. Um, I think it's about 400 megabytes of samples. And let's just listen to some, um, some, some sounds we can get out of this plugin.
here's some impression. Um, I think the playability is really good. So we have to bear in mind this is a free plugin. So just really the playability. We ha I have a big dynamic output. I can play very quiet passages. Um, but the maximum velocity layer is maybe not that high. So it feels like a something in between uh, me for Forte, and met uh, Forte and Fortissimo. But apart from that, um, I think this grand, this this instrument, this grand, is suitable for more um, mellow pieces. I think the overall sound is a bit mellow. You can probably EQ it, so um, you can get some out of that. Of course, you will increase also the noise when you do that. Um, of course, also the uh, quality of the samples is not like a high-priced library, which is of course not necessary. But um, the overall sound is very convincing, I think. I like it quite a lot. And there are definitely uh, uses and purposes for that, especially slow and slow pieces and um, pieces where the sound can develop itself, where you don't need extreme staccato, where you don't need extreme phrasing, just to create a nice a texture of sound, then this is really great. Grand. But as you can hear, also the low notes have quite some oomph to them. And um, I would really recommend to download it, especially since it is free, if you just want to try out what it feels like to play on a virtual instrument. This is a great choice. Okay, now let's go to the next instrument. So the next instrument I want to cover is the so-called Rain Piano from Sample Tech. It is a very nice, uh, nicely sampled upright piano. This is now the first upright in this video and it is very suitable for melancholic pieces, for slow pieces. But I have now here a quite lively Foxtrot piece from Alexander Zwarzmann, so which is um, just shows also some nice qualities of this instrument. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's uh, fun to play and now let's have a little bit uh, listen to a more melancholic and uh, slow piece. And so on. So um, I think that this is a nice instrument. It is a playable, playable instrument. It has its unique tone. Uh, the st stereo image right now feels a bit confined, but you have a lot of settings which I didn't change that much. 
and if you put a nice reverb on the on this uh, plugin i think you can get some um just also nice soundscapes the price i would personally buy this only if it's uh, in off uh, on offer i think it's originally 80 dollars if it's uh, on offer i think right now it's actually an offer um so i want to also put a link there you can get it for ten dollars or something twenty dollars for that price i would definitely grab it because you get a um, quite nicely sampled piano it has not that many velocity layers but it's not necessary always to have a deeply sampled piano sometimes you just want to have a character piano and this one has has its own character so you can distinguish the tone and therefore use it for special projects good let's go to the next piano so the next plugin is the so-called sample sam signature grant so sss and um this is a real insider tip i think not that many people know it i think it's a, a little bit known more known now because it's so outstandingly good especially for the price um i'm not quite sure right now what the official price is but uh, if you wait for an offer you can clearly get it in the uh, low priced category but i think even the normal price is is less than a hundred dollars i'm pretty sure about that but let's just have a listen first and then i will discuss a bit about it i will again play the chopin sonata excerpt And so on so you can hear this is now a step up in quality i would say from the instruments we have heard so far it has a very nice this is by the way the so-called solo recital a preset so this is like a just a solo recital and i think uh, the sound is really nice so it has a certain warmth to it i don't know how they could manage that how they captured it but um, you can get also a nice dynamic range. But for me personally, I have problems with the playability. For me also, this instrument has certain notes which um, just have a very strange velocity mapping and velocity output and tombs output, where a lot changes in a little space. So, um, for me, this makes a clear difference to high-end products. I would not compare this instrument with, for example, VSL products or with the Garreton Grand, which we'll cover later, just because of the fact that the playability is really a little bit off at some places. It just, is, it just feels off and you have to really tweak stuff to be able to circumvent that. I have a very aggressive curve right now, which the best plugins can handle like a charm but if you have a not that great mapping then it really shows and you get janky results but maybe let's have a look at a second piece
So as you can hear, a very beautiful tone, but I just can't help. Again, I had a little bit problems with the velocity mapping. Maybe let's have a look at the Mephisto Walls excerpt also, um, when we're right now at it. Very solid sound, very solid sound. It doesn't, I don't feel like it is um, exceptional in any way, exceptionally bad, exceptionally good. It's a very solid, nice sound, but unfortunately the playability for me personally is not that great. But for the price, it's definitely, you can, like, you can consider to buy it. Also, if you don't need it for classical purposes, if you just program it or if you play easier pieces, then uh, just the pure sound of it is very nice. But the implementation can be better, in my opinion. It is just my feeling. I have a lot of plugins. I have all the VSLs, I have the Garreton, the Ravenscroft and so on. And But uh, I just feel a little bit, it's difficult to play on this instrument. Let's look at the next one. So now I have the Garreton CFX Lite. So this is the Lite version. I actually have the full version, as you can see on the screen, but I um, changed it in such a way that it is the light version, which is, by the way, the classic perspective with only the close mic. This is exactly what the current light is, which you can get for, I don't know, $70, $80. It's definitely in the low price range. And in my opinion, it's the best sound for uh, the low price range you can get. And yeah, let's have a listen to the Mephisto Waltz again, how it sounds and um, just what feeling we get. So on and so on. So this has a very great um, sound playability. This is my favorite. There is, I think, not much else to say. I can again try to play the Chopin exer excerpt so that you can just see um, how I feel like uh, how I feel while I play it. Sorry for all the mistakes, I cannot see the notes exactly here, but this is so much easier to play with this instrument compared to the other ones so far. This is really obvious to me personally, 
just as a perspective, player perspective, it is much easier to play this instrument than the others. And yeah, I think I'm not going to play more excerpts because, and there are probably, probably on YouTube many excerpts, but for me, this is the personal pick for the low cut category. Um, it is maybe not the most versatile instrument ever. Uh, obviously, the ambient mics definitely help to co help in contributing a warm and just more rounded sound. So if you can, I would recommend to buy a full library, definitely. Um, but if you have very limited budget, um, then instead of a free plugin, if you want to spend some money, this would be the choice. So the next piano is the Waves Grand Rhapsody piano. And as you can see, there are a lot of controls. Let's have a listen first. So this is a nice plugin. It has a nice sound. It has a good playability. Um, I think the playability also has some issues, but it is not ba as bad as some of the other ones we already had. Um, what is quite interesting with this plugin, so it's a bit of a strange bird for me personally, is that there are so many options just implemented in the plugin. There is a comp compressor, there is a reverb engine, which you can really change many parameters of it. There are so many microphone positions, um, I think six or eight or something, and you can mix them in a way you like. And I, maybe the, there are other, other things I forgot. So there are just so many things you can change and there are many presets. So this is a, a nice plugin if you need more flexibility in your arrangements, in your microphone positions. But um, apart from that, it's a very solid plugin, especially for the price. It's also definitely in the low price category. And maybe let's just listen to another example.
so just a random playing in the end you get a feeling of more extreme situations the low notes are not that great they are very flat um, in the higher velocity velocity the higher for higher velocities the high notes have quite some charm to them i like them i think they sound a bit unique for this instrument so the next instrument i want to cover is native instruments um, maverick which is their character grant a very solid instrument it's right at the edge to um, the medium price category with a hundred dollars and you can i think not really get it cheaper except you buy the whole keys package um, this is a great instrument just for i think it's a bechstein d actually and it's a great instrument for romantic pieces late romantic pieces and just salon pieces house music and here i have a romance to show that you get this nice round warm um just engulfing tone Beautiful tone, I think. Just very convincing, very nice to play, great playability, and um, a good deal for the price. It's not the cheapest plugin, but it's uh, it's just nice to play. It's always nice to fire it up. You have also quite some options, but it's a standard native instruments kind of thing. And um, yeah, I think what you can maybe maybe criticize is that the um, we have this very special kind of attack, which is a little bit rounded off. So sometimes it feels a bit strange when you play the native instruments plugins. It's kind of rounded off. But on the other hand, you get great playability. So that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. Let's hear another piece. So yeah, that's the sound you get. It's not the greatest concert grand style sound. It doesn't have to be. It's an instrument from maybe even the late 19th century or early 20th century. So it has its own character, um, which is a bit mellow, but I have also had a grand like that at some point and they really sound like that in real life. So I think they capture it nicely. And if that's the kind of sound you need for something, for romantic pieces, for example, where you want to have it a little bit more 
just confined atmosphere, then this is a great instrument, I would say. The next plugin is the Gentleman, which is an upright piano, also from Native Instruments. Um, I think the only one, if I remember correctly, it's also about $200, so at the edge of to the medium category. And uh, yeah, let's have a listen with uh, some more jazz style piece here. So yeah, this is uh, also character sound. I, in my, for my taste, um, Native Instruments tends to put very much uh, bass and low uh, just frequencies in the sound, which I don't like. I think, I think it's a bit muddy. I would EQ this out. Um, but this is a, I think this is the jazz preset or in a jazz pub or something. And very suitable for this kind of music, I think. Um, of course, since it's an upright, it's automatically a bit more confined and dynamic output and dynamic range. Um, but the playability is very nice. And I think it's just a very nice upright piano. Since the market has even more expensive uprights, quite some of them actually, um, if we put it in relative perspective, the price is not uh, that high. Because one might say, oh, this is only an upright, so it should not cost as much as a grand piano, but when it's done really nicely, I think it's worth it, especially if you need the sound for some project or something. Now let's get to the Noir piano, from also from Native Instrument, from Nils Fram, uh, which is regularly $150, so it's in the middle of the medium category, but you can sometimes get it also for half the price. I think it was an introductory offer when I grabbed it for 75. Mm, not sure if there are offers for that, but anyways, the price is in the medium range. And I am really in love with that piano because sometimes you can, sometimes they can just capture the soul of an instrument too. Not only the pure sound and just data and megabytes and so on, gigabytes of stuff. But in this case, I just feel an atmosphere when I play and I don't even touch the crazy algorithmic settings where you can have a ping pong effects and just chopping the sound, reversing it and have really soundscapes which you can create. If you go through the presets, then you can see that this is extremely versatile uh, plugin apart from the nice sound, which doesn't have so many velocity layers. It doesn't have Unacorda samples. So people say, oh, I wouldn't use this as my go-to instrument. 
but I actually use this also as my go-to instrument for pure piano playing because it is convincing in the in the way it plays it is just nice to play and it's very uncomplicated it doesn't give me uh, pops and crackles and stuff or things like that so let's listen to the Chopin again so on and so on so this is a very very convincing plugin in my opinion just the playability is awesome it's one of the best I have to really say it like that for me personally for this instrument for this cover I this uh, the noir has one of the best playabilities the dynamic range is just incredible let's listen to some just general sounds Yeah, and so on and so on so very big dynamic output but at the same time quite playable really playable so this is definitely a recommendation from my side um, I think it's it's good enough to use as main instrument it has maybe the craziest shimmering highs of all plugins ever maybe not but it's a very solid instrument which I personally just like a lot and therefore I this one I can really recommend because I think if you buy it or if you have it, then I cannot imagine that you're not happy with it. Even if you if you just consider the crazy possibilities and the sound sculpting section and the algorithmic section, um, you can just create new worlds basically with your playing, which is just an awesome idea to give you this easy tweakable space. So the next uh, plugin I want to demonstrate is the Modern U from VI Labs. It is also an upright piano. Um, I think it's also ra rather in the middle of the medium price range. And let's just listen to some excerpt from Vladimir Rebikov, uh, Lise uh, Immortel.
That's a great sound. That's a great playability. It's one of my favorite uprights. You just feel that the programming was really nailed down. People programmed that who just didn't read how to how to program a VST plugin, but really experience and um, just care for the little details. Also, you have a lot of options to adjust. I think the um, the GUI, the, the graphical representation is very nice. Also, um, it, it looks modern, it looks stylish. And um, yeah, so I'm very happy with that instrument. I can also recommend it if you need an upright. I think it sounds like a grand. Uh, of course, if you get to the low notes, then you will hear that it's confined. It's not a grand, but especially the highs, the mids are very clear, extremely clear. And just the quality of the samples is high. And if you change the microphones, then you can then you also notice that whatever you do it always sounds good so that shows me when you have a good plugin you don't have to fiddle around until you find something good you just do anything and it will always sound interesting it sounds different it sounds very nice but in a different way it sounds more roomy more binaural or whatever but um, it always sounds interesting so maybe let's even have a listen to the last movement a little bit Good that I can say that's a work in progress, but it's not about the playing. It's just that you can get a big sound. You can get, you can play a Chopin piano sonata on this instrument, and it's no problem. Let's even have a listen to just the very start. So you have that upright sound. It will not be a grand sound. It will be a little bit confined. It will be a little bit, the attack is rounded off. But of course you can EQ also, if you need a more harsh and bright sound, you can change the microphones. But um, just for an upright sound, it's, it's just so nice. And let's maybe listen also to the low notes because they re reveal the character. Some rattling there I discovered a little mistake on the sampling but things like that I mean that's such a high note can happen it's not the best thing but but anyways you can hear this range sounds totally like a completely brand new concert upright so um, yeah that's just nice to have also to just have a change not to play always on a grand maybe to play on a very nicely made upright very playable upright 
and the modern user great choice it's not the cheapest but um, it has a lot of flavor a lot of tweakability um, the visuals are nice so i would recommend this one okay now to the garreton cfx full version so um, this is basically one of my favorite plugins ever made i think the playability is almost unbeatable it's very good you can have thunderous lows very warm and soft highs the mids are very clear also they are not flat or muddy the low mids and the settings for my personal taste as just playing piano playing as a soul pianist are exactly what i need um, there is not too much you can tweak some noises some resonances some microphone positions not too many no issues no struggles with the program no crackles pops it won't load or something like everything is just perfect so for the price it's in the middle range and i think you will not really get offers because uh, it's just so fav so such a favorite plugin of many people that you will have to have to pay those i don't know 200 dollars 180 so that's now the upper medium range of um, things but yeah let's have a listen to some sound and i will not talk too much about it i think because there are so many videos also on youtube i will just give a little interpretation of this LEG by vasily kalinikov I think that says all to be honest um, just not much more needed to play if I am criticizing this plugin on a very very high level then um, by the way the unacorda is great also but really good on unacorda but the repetition if I play very quick repetitions it feels a bit not like the best ever you can have because the attack and the attack is very specific it's not even a negative thing but it's just very specific so you can get tired of the sound of the piano because it has a rather round attack to be honest it's rather round so it's not like this extremely sharp sound i mean but if you play very loudly you can get crazy sound um just wall of sound So this this plugin is really suited for 
all kinds of difficult to play virtuosic music where you need really that control that control which is necessary to not fool around you know to have like a plugin which is just whatever but this is really serious plugin to play serious music um, not in the sense that there is bad music or whatever but just um, if you really need the control um, as a pianist then this plugin pretty much gives it to the point where you are the bottleneck and not the software that's really what i can say about this the next plugin is the hammersmith pro which is also at the upper end now of the medium range about 200 dollars is the original price the normal retail as a normal price and that's not it that's not it for me i cannot really play on it i think the dynamics are too extreme the playability just feels off a little i can try i can try to play something So the thing with this plugin is we have some difference here to the other plugins so far. This instrument has a separate sample um, set for sustained notes. If you play, press the pedal, then you get different samples. However, there is not a half pedaling option, which is really a problem for me because sometimes when I play quick passage, quick pedal passages and I like to have a rather continuous and smooth way of pedaling. I'm always a little bit in the middle of things cause you can shape the sound a lot with that. But if you have on and off, then no matter how nice the samples are, when you have separate samples for the pedaled version, just sometimes bass notes get cut off. And that's so bad because then you have to edit them um, because obviously on a grand they wouldn't get cut off. You normally know how to play on a grand and um, that's a problem and then you could hear also the low note was so surprisingly weak given that I played at a certain level like on the garrison it would have been like just my you just know my mind knows how it would have sounded on the garrison but here it just sounds so flat suddenly but sometimes it's so loud and I like the sound of the piano a lot I think especially the higher notes are very just fragile and uh, raspy a little bit, not too straightforward, not too boring, basically. But um, I have problems with the playability of this instrument, especially when I play quite difficult passages. I can I can't even try to play the list and just see what happens.
on and so on. But here I can just, I don't know if you can hear it, that I have big problems to play that, but I have big problems to play that because um, just, it is not, it just doesn't feel that right for some reason. And um, the velocity mapping is just so strange. That's really all I can say. Um, if I don't play two advanced pieces, I think that's a great one. But for the price, I just cannot recommend it. Um, that's just my opinion. So the next instrument is the Pearl Concert Grand. As you might know, the Pearl Concert Grand has had a problem with the hall microphones, which gives the following effect. background which is a bit unfortunate because this means that the whole microphone is basically unusable sometimes it gives you bursts of noise in the middle of a slow and quiet section that's unacceptable and this just means that um, you have to know that basically one microphone position is unusable so you get three microphone positions and let's have a look at them so here I am at the list so let's just hear how it sounds around not really musical but just to get a feel of how it plays how it behaves in extreme situations I think a little bit the uh, uh, just mid-range notes are a little bit muddy in my opinion just they feel a bit strange especially when you play maybe you like that vintage muddy sound but when you play and you suddenly get a really weak response from your heart pressing the keys it feels so bad for the velocity mapping and you should put some reverb i think on it which i didn't do now but um i think think for the sake of demonstration the sound is fine so the sound is nice i think you cannot really say something against uh, the sound but i think also the playability is not um the, not the best so i think i would not buy it for the full price to be honest i think it's not good enough but if you get it in an offer in some offer then um, it's probably probably worth it. You have to really think what makes it stand out. Why should you buy that one? That's kind of a question. But um, I can see that there was love when they sampled it. And let's maybe just hear something else.
Yeah, so you can hear the sound is nice, but just the muddiness and the velocity mapping is so off again. Um, I'm not sure if I would recommend it. If you really like the sound, let's, let's have a listen to the highs again. an impression of the high sound to me personally it's not especially unique and crazy so um, I think I would not recommend this plugin just out of my personal experience just out of my feeling when I play it I expected more when I heard the demos in terms of playability I think it's not satisf not not enough for my standard so the next plugin is the Black Grant from SampleTech. Um, this is my most recent purchase um, because of also the offer, uh, the, the offer they have right now. Um, I think officially the Black Grant MK2, the second version, is um, to be sold for 150 or 170 dollars or something. Right now I think you can have it for 40 or 50 dollars. So um, normally it's in the medium price range, but right now it's in the low price range with that offer. And let's see what the sound uh, gives. I think it is um, uh, a Steinway D. I'm not 100% sure right now. I think it's a Steinway D, which was sampled. On and so on so what I would say about this plugin I think the playability is pretty good so it, it makes fun to play you have a good feeling for the um, different dynamic different dynamic ranges to play piano to play forte. Um, for my taste the sound is a bit dull of course not every Steinway is the same maybe it was a New York, New York Steinway or a 19th century Steinway or whatever kind of Steinway. So there is a bit of leeway in that in the kind of timbre you get. But for me, the sound quality is not um, that great. With my headphones, I can really hear uh, that just the overall tone 
is just a bit flat it's not that lively it's not that fresh and in for my ears for my my taste the reason is the sound quality and really not um only the just actual sound of the grand we can try to hear um a little bit more lively passage how the how this instrument behaves So I think you kind of get used to that sound, but um, it's really quite mellow. I mean, I would, if I use this for pieces, I would really have to EQ it a lot, the highs, to bring out the highs, because that's not a sound I can quite enjoy. Um, I think for the offer, it's a good choice. I think there are definitely some qualities to the piano. It gives um it's it's unique sound also the re release sample technology it feels very nice it feels just cohesive um but uh yeah i think so it's not it's not one of those pianos for extremely virtuosic playing it's not one of them for extreme pristine clarity i would maybe say it's more of a character uh, character style grant and for the price of the offer for i don't know 40 50 bucks it's a good it's a good deal i would say and then i would recommend it for the full price of course not because there are just so many other better options um, nowadays so let's see now the next grant so the next grant is the so-called tvbo <laughs> it's a little bit strange name but very uh, rememberable or uh, nice to remember um, I think it's the acronym for the, ver the very big one, which is, I think, the greatest, largest um, library from SampleTech, um, which is, as far as I can recall, a Yamaha C7, which is nice because um, I personally, I think this is maybe even the first or the second in this uh, whole video. And of course, Yamaha C7 has a really bright sound, so it's good for like pop music. It's good for hymns and just just congregational singing and you know things like that. And um, I will try a little bit of one of those etudes here from Milan Dvorak, um, just to show more the um, you know more more the pop qualities of that instrument.
a bit dry the sound you can put external reverb in it more reverb um, yeah but i think i have a quite similar quite similar verdict compared to the or as the um, black grand i think um even though it's a very the c7 is a quite bright instrument i think still the overall sound is a little bit mellow but it's better than with a black grand i think but it's still just it just feels a little bit like dust is on it to, for my ears for my experience so um that's just what i uh, hear and also the price is i think in the high category for that one it would be 250 dollars but i think you can get it for 50 or something so they have very high offers on it for 50 dollars i think um i would personally rather grab one of them either the black rand or this one which you can decide by what you think sounds better because the playability is really good the playability is nice it's very solid it's nicely done um, my problem is also a little bit the visual the uh, graphical interface is really a little bit iffy um, especially from the black rand it just looks a bit not very nice uh, the knobs are super difficult to turn because um, it feels like the knobs are it was programmed on a 1024 1768 display or something little movement just changes the whole knob so um that's not completely like 2021 style for my taste so that's why i wouldn't pay the full full price anymore because it's just out of date a bit but maybe we i can i can we can look at another uh, demonstration to get a feeling how the sounds and also if i play something different then i can give more thoughts So yeah, that was a demonstration of the high velocities and um, this is, um, I think all I can say about this is very similar to the Black Grand, the experience in my, for my taste, for my, in my opinion, the color of the tone is just a little bit different, but um, yeah, if, if, it, if you like the sound, then I think I would recommend to buy it. If you just think the sound is nice, if you have a little bit questions about the sound, then I think I would not take it because it will not be better when you try it yourself except if you really play hymns or something if you really crank the velocity curve up to just get those high samples then i think it is very bright and shines and then it's nice so let's move now to the next grant so the next instrument is the famous ravenscroft grant um, which is also at the very top of the medium range for $200. Um, I think there are sometimes offers, but not too many. The price is rather stable for that instrument. Um, my general opinion is I think it's a great instrument. Um, I think it's difficult to find really bad things about it. Most people would say it's a harsh metallic sound. It's a, um, the sound doesn't make you dream so much or something. Um, the playability is very nice so i think the programming is great una corda is also nice i think also the graphical interface is pretty nice mm. pictures could be a little bit of higher quality 
the knobs are a little bit fiddly, but I think the range of options is very reasonable, very clever. Um, what you can change, um, just the terminology, the sympathetic resonance um, option. I mean, also the, the uh, poly polyphony that you can change that. That's a nice idea. And yeah, let's just hear a little bit of that sound. I'm going to try to play a bit of the third movement now from the Chopin Sonata. So much for that. Um, yeah, I think you can hear just the sound, the expansion of the sound is very nice. And let's maybe hear another sample. Forgive me the mistakes. It's been a long day today, a lot of work. Um, but anyways, I think uh, the control is very nice for this instrument. You have good repetition, uh, yeah, rep repetition options. And also the staccato, you can play very precise and nice staccato, which is not the thing, the case for every instrument. So I, um, it's a bit difficult. So. With the Ravenscroft, um, the thing is the price is rather high, given that it's not exceptionally good, like the Garreton. I would still choose the Garreton over the Ravenscroft, personally, because just with the Garreton I feel really at home with the sound. It's just also a personal thing, but it's still a very good instrument. So um, I can just maybe give some other demonstration without cheap music, but just to get a feeling f from this instrument.
Yeah, very, very nice sound, good playability, but not the, the best sound. So um, I would only buy it if it's an, with an offer, to be honest. And um, I think I co could not say I would recommend it, but I cannot also say to not recommend it. So um, probably watch other videos about that. <laughs> but um, I don't regret buying it. I think I have I have produced some very nice recordings with it if you use some EQing and some other techniques, but um, it's not the easiest to use, like the Garretan, which always has a nice sound. I think here this can sometimes be dull, you have to change the microphones a little bit and so on. So the next instrument is the 8DO Studio Upright. This is again an upright and I've, it's the only one I have which is literally in the high price range for I think $250 with a regular price, a very high price for an upright piano. Therefore, the experience should be really top-notch. In my opinion, when you demand such a price, when you say you have deeply the best deeply sampled upright in the world, the most, the biggest size and so on, then the experience should be really great. Let's hear a bit how this instrument sounds first with um, an etude here, again from Milan Dvorak from the Jazz Etudes Part 2. So much for that. I think the playing is terrible. I think the response you get is garbage. I would not recommend this plugin, especially for that crazy price, which I of course didn't buy. I bought it in offer, but even with an offer price, um, I would still not recommend it because there are just better uprights. There are many uprights. The Modern U is an ex excellent upright. Of course, this is more a character piano, but take the Rain piano, which you can grab for 10 bucks from Sample Tech. They have often, often offers and um, it's still better playable. The sound, of course, is quite a character sound, which is um, the purpose of this piano too. But I think the playability is just absolutely unplayable. As you can probably hear, some notes just burst out. Some notes are completely swallowed. I think the programming is very bad. And I think that's pretty much all. I could say about this one. For me, if I cannot play on an instrument, then basically it's not something I would consider to use again. Of course, you can program it and get nice vintage sounds because the sounds by themselves are not bad. But I think that the velocity curve mapping is very, very strange with this plugin because I have a very steep curve all the time to really get from my hybrid upright here all the high velocities out of this instrument. That's why I chose purposely a very high velocity curve, which I normally don't choose. I choose a little bit less steep to be able to, um, you know, to play also quieter and more softer things. But um, I think where it shows if a plugin is good or not, it shows really with those difficult big changes in dynamics where you have suddenly from piano, you go to forte and so on back. And then you can hear, oh, is it cohesive? Is it nicely programmed or not? And I think with this one, unfortunately, not at all. And uh, yeah, that's what I would say about this. And let's go to the next one. So the next plugin is the VSL Bösendorfer Upright. So now we are finally in the realm of the VSL plugins. Um, as you can see on the screen, it's just very clear that the graphical representation is very nice. They have really high quality pictures, scalable even. This is not even the biggest scale. 
otherwise it would go over um, over my picture in the video but um, just the, the the layout is nice and tidy and it's just nice to look at that's really important for me because I don't want to have seven knobs without label when I use a VST plugin it should give me also it put me in a certain mood when I fire it up and the whole this is a part of the experience and I think the VSL plugins just have very very nice graphical representation and I didn't have any problems with it like not pictures not loading or crashing um, they are also built very solidly so that's nice just for fun I will play the same piece now again this um, bossa nova rhythm bossa nova piece and let's just compare what the sound is I have put now all microphones on just all from the full library so hope I don't get crackles this is not the reason from the plugin I think from no plugin so far from the Ravenscroft there were some crackles but um, it's more about the OBS or something so please forgive me with those crackles um, if it's really annoying to you they are not part if you play it on your own with your own audio driver there are just so many parameters which can lead to these annoying crackles and pops So I think especially here in the high register you can hear a very silky nice sound with that plugin which is um, I really think different to for example the modern U which is my one of my favorite uprights my go-to uprights um, this has a definitely different character which goes more in the direction of the um, gentleman from native instruments I would say also, I think the velocity mapping is also rather on the low side, so I have to really crank up the curve to get those nice, um, nice bright sounds. As otherwise, I would have to EQ it. The playability is really nice, especially for an upright, so nothing against that. And um, yeah, I think I would recommend it. I would recommend it, although the price is really high. So I personally would buy it only, again, only with an offer to be honest otherwise I think it's too expensive but um, if you if you can get it with an offer then I think it's worth it if I can give just hear some more of the, these uh, sounds <laughs>
So yeah, this is a very nice sound. It is um, a little bit mellow again. So it depends on the piece. You want to maybe EQ it a bit or change the microphone positions properly. But um, yeah, that's all I can say about the Bösendorf Upright. So let's go to the next instrument. So the next instrument is the VSL CFX from the Synchron Piano series. And um, again, we have a very nice graphical representation. And um, yeah, I think what this is now, basically um, it counts for all VSLs. The playability is really good from, from, for all of them. And also the sound quality is very high. Um, I think the just number of microphones is maybe too much. I wouldn't need so many um, microphones. It would be a little bit also better for the SSD not to have 300 gigabytes of samples, um, just to have those number of microphone positions. But I have now here all microphone positions. I can play it live because uh, the polyphony is not that high, but uh, I hope we don't focus now on the longest reverb tails and sustains of everything, but it's more about the general idea of the sound. So let's hear how the CFX sounds again with that Mephisto Walls excerpt. That's always so nice to play. Um, the cutoffs, forgive me about that. It's really because otherwise we, um, my system doesn't handle it. Um, this was, of course, an extreme example of very many notes at the same time. But um, yeah, let's just hear another example. And another example.
just messing around here, but um, very big dynamic range, great playability. Um, just <laughs> it's difficult to say something against it. Um, for in my opinion, um, you can basically stop searching if you find if you can buy the VSL, if you find them, if you can buy them. Um, for me as a student, it's only possible with the, the offers. I think they have offers right now, but um, of course it's a lot of money, but just um, the, the clarity of the sound and the pl also compared with the playability, it's uh, enough reason, I think, to try it. I mean, you can try it out also, but um, I'm really happy with the VSL plugins and I can al always make videos I could talk an hour about the CFX, but let's move on to the next one. So yeah, you have a distinctly different sound from the CFX just because it's Steinway. The playability is also very nice, although in my opinion, the playability from the CFX is a little bit better. Although they amended the um, sample mapping, the velocity mapping in the Steinway D with an update. Don't forget to download it, by the way. Um, it's much better now, but it's still on the very bright side. So if you want to get, if you want to get more out of this, of course, deeply sampled, of the um, like piano pianissimo samples, then you have to probably change your control, except you have really like an NV10 or something, um, when NV10 is much better than what I have, but um, from an upright, but I still can get a lot out of um, the plugin, but um, let's hear maybe all again some classical music. <laughs> Now let's listen to another example.
sorry for all the distortion and pops and crackles. If you uh, use more reasonable microphone positions, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm demonstrating all at once now because it just is it just feels like being in that room. Uh, it's incredible. And um, with my headphones, if I close the eyes, it's really like I'm playing in that room. But um, yeah, that was just many notes at the same time. So I got the, had those um, hit the limiter there. But anyways, um, this is a great instrument to play classical music, of course. Just really your go-to instrument to play Mozart and Bach or Liszt or romantic music, basically everything, because it's just so versatile. And um, yeah, that's just an ideal instrument as a piano player, where, um, I mean, maybe not totally ideal. For me personally, those many microphone positions can be a little bit distracting to try to get the best sound or something. That's where I love the Garrett a little bit more because it just gives you something and then it's always sufficient. But um, unfortunately, they have those nice presets like p player preset. And then it's, uh, it's uh, most of the time, it's the perfect preset to just play on your own, basically. So yeah, I hope the, these were some nice sound demonstrations for the Steinway. Let's go on to the next one. So now I have the Bösendorf Imperial. And I will try to play the same excerpt. I will try to play the beginning. I will try to play the beginning. not about playing La Campanella now but this is now at a, at a level where I can play pieces like that where I can basically have the same experience as when I completely turn the electronic off and just play on this upright as it stands here where the limit is really the mechanic inside it and not just some samples and whatever so um, that's a nice thing about it and I can now try to go a little bit with the Chopin again
so and I could play the whole sonata or practice the whole sonata like that because this is really just your one with a keyboard the, the the playability is so great and then you also have the black keys which I can enable I shifted now the keyboard one octave down I'm sorry, <laughs> just makes so fun to play those uh, low notes. Oh, that's just great. So that's uh, my so the last instrument is now going to be the newest addition to the VSL series, Synchron Piano series, the 280BC. I have again enabled um, all microphones and um, I will not probably show the Brutner because I did a comp whole vi video on it why it's such a great choice for romantic music. You can check it out um, if you want, just type it on YouTube. And um, yeah, so let's hear again this Chopin excerpt. too many voices at the same time sorry for that um, I should have changed the voice counter a little bit less but it's not about the technical details I think um, you can hear that just the sound is very warm the sound is um, kind of unique it sounds so different from the CFX and the Steinway and it's probably my favorite from all these instruments except if you need a very big sound like what you get from the Steinway or something. But um, I think that, of course, the playability is very good. There is nothing to say against that. Um, but just the clarity of the sound is just something else. I covered it in different videos already. Um, I think it's exceptional if you listen to the following.
The clarity, I think, is so precise. It's so clear that you can play a chord in the lowest register and it just, it just stays there like perfectly fine. No mud, no too sharpness. It's just perfect. It's so nice. And um, that's great for Beethoven, for example, when you know you play sonata and then it ends like that. Uh, that chord is just, it stands there so perfectly, so nice. And I can try to play another excerpt. Just very nice. I think that's a good end to this video. Um, I hope you can hear the clarity of the sound, the precision I can put in, because I have no distractions from just mud and stuff or unclearness in the sound. Um, I can completely concentrate on the performance. So this instrument is especially great, also because the room is not too big. It's uh, in the synchron stage B, it was recorded there. This is especially great. For Bach, for Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, uh, classic mu classical music. For romantic music, I might also use this one, but <laughs> the Bösendorfer Imperial is kind of more fun. Just the sound is, has just more oomph to it. Um, but I mean, this one can also have oomph to it. So <laughs> there is that. If you put enough room re reverb in, if you have a convolution reverb with a great concert hall, then this is also a very, very big sound. So yeah, I hope this video is hel helpful for you. It's probably awfully long, but uh, it's more like a lexicographical thing where you can just click. I will put timestamps in the description and you can just listen. If you wanna buy this instrument, they can, then you can listen to my opinion on it and my playing and you can decide for yourself in the end. That's the important thing. So thanks for listening and have a nice day.